In Los Angeles, we are live wherever you may be and however you may be listening. We are on iHeartRadio, we're on Fox Sports Radio, and we are right here on FS1. Chris Mannix, Richard Jefferson, a LeBron teammate, Chris Broussard, LeVar Ball later next hour, and Joy Taylor is joining me. We've got, this is kind of a trade deadline show today. This is what it is. It, yes, it's a trade deadline preview show, and maybe we'll have some news as the day goes on. Yeah, it will be. The trade deadline uh, ends at about the end of our show, so the next three hours we're going to give you the very latest stuff. Um, I do want to start, though, with late, 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 late. Last night, uh, Kevin Durant went to a microphone, and he's just tired of hearing his name out there with the Knicks. Uh, there was an article written by a young person named Ethan Strauss, been covering the Warriors forever, some speculation, some discussion of Kevin Durant, and he just didn't like it, and it set him off last night. Here you go. We've noticed that you hadn't talked for a while. Why do you care? Has anything to do with conversation about free agency? Yeah, that's the conversation you're going to have. I don't think about that type of stuff. That's your job. You got to do Ethan Strauss who come in here and <clears throat> just give his whole opinion on stuff and make it seem like it's coming from me. And he just walk around here, don't talk to nobody, just walk in here and survey and then write something like that. And now y'all piling on me because I don't want to talk to y'all about that. I have nothing to do with the Knicks. I don't know who traded Porzingis. They got nothing to do with me. I'm trying to play basketball. Y'all come in here every day. Ask me about free agency, ask my teammates, my coaches, you rile up the fans about it. Uh, let us play basketball. That's all I'm saying. And now when I don't want to talk to y'all, it's a problem with me. Come on, man. Grow up. Grow up. Yeah, you, grow up. Come on, bro. We're talking. So, who are you? Why do I got to talk to you? How are you playing? How's the team playing in the last I, couple weeks? I'm done. You know you don't care about that. I just asked you. Grow up are the perfect two words for Kevin Durant. So, Kevin, you want the money, the power, the fame, and the worship. But don't ask me a question. Well, excuse me, but when LeBron James signs a one-year contract, when Kevin Durant signs a one- or a two-year contract, and it's up soon, that begs for speculation. That demands the question. Your boss will tell you as a reporter, you got to ask KD about this. And then Kevin Durant had gone silent the last eight days, wouldn't talk to the media. That's their first opportunity to talk to him. I am pro player. I've always been pro NBA player. But if you want the power and the fame and the money and the leverage, you got to ask a, answer a question, especially when you like playing the one-year contract game. You can't get... A one-year deal. You make a decision as a star player in this league, as a difference maker, which LeBron is, Kevin Durant is. Those are difference makers, and they're superstars. When they sign one-year deals, you're toying with your team and you're playing with your fans. And then the media, we're going to play a game too. It's called the speculation game. Steph Curry's on this team. He never deals with this drama. Why? Because Steph Curry's totally committed long-term to the Warriors. Therefore, the media doesn't poke and prod and ask questions. We're not digging here just to dig. There's a gold bar underneath the surface. Okay? I, as a reporter, I don't like making athletes uncomfortable, but I would have to go and answer the question and ask the question because... Kevin Durant's got a contract that demands and begs that I ask the question. Here's the funny thing about Kevin Durant. Like, he's telling everybody to grow up. Dude, you're the one that wants to be LeBron. Okay, LeBron and Michael Jordan are on this elevated plane. And Kevin Durant wants to so desperately be in that plane. We know that. We know it bothers him. That's been reported multiple times. You can tell in his responses when he said everybody is a suck up to LeBron and everybody worships LeBron and everybody's got a man crush on LeBron. Clearly, Kevin Durant, it bothers Kevin Durant, right? That's why he talks about it. He wants to be on this Michael Jordan LeBron plane. But the reason he's not, he can't handle it. Michael Jordan brilliantly played the media forever. 
on his terms. He was playful and fun, poked and prodded. LeBron, by and large, he just kind of has fun, goes to social media, pokes and prods. He doesn't melt down. Michael wasn't melting down. Kevin Durant's melting down like six times a year. You got to be able to handle it. Part of being a superstar, and this is a big part of it, is handling being a superstar. Samuel L. Jackson's a superstar. He can handle it. Russell Crowe could not. He threw phones at people behind a desk at a hotel. Russell Crowe couldn't handle being a superstar. He's just a, he's just a good actor. By the way, Jay-Z can handle being a superstar. Kanye melts down about three times a year. LeBron can handle it. Michael Jordan could handle it. Magic could handle it. Kevin Durant can't. He wants all the... He loves being talked about. He criticizes us when we do shows that are very LeBron-leaning. He's noted that it bothers him. He calls us fanboys and suck-ups. So it clearly bothers him. Then handle the questions about your future because you sign one and two-year deals. That's the game. And by the way... This is why Kevin Durant can't go to the Knicks. Golden State is perfect for him. He's insulated. He's protected. Steve Kerr used to be a broadcaster. He's incredibly media savvy. So he deflects a lot of the KD stuff. Steph Curry, the world's greatest teammate, got a star next to him, deflects a lot of the stuff. If the Warriors lose, Kevin Durant doesn't take all the heat. Sometimes they blame Draymond. Sometimes they blame Clay. Golden State's Perfect. They insulate Kevin Durant, who can be incredibly insecure. This is another example. Lecturing people to grow up when it's really, Kevin, bathrooms have mirrors. They still work. Use them. This is about you wanting to be the superstar, wanting to be LeBron, wanting to be MJ, and but you can't handle questions at a press conference and speculation on blogs and the internet. That's really keeping you up at night. That's aggravating you. What Michael Jordan had people chasing him around the country. LeBron James has helicopters flying over his house. And you can't handle an article from a blog? The, 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 the Warriors are built for Kevin Durant. He's protected and insulated. Can you imagine him going to the New York Knicks? Where if they lose, it's on Kevin. Where if, if they don't advance to the second round, it's on Kevin. That's not the issue anymore. That when I hear he's going to go to New York, I just roll my eyes and think, you got to be kidding me. They've got the savviest head coach in the league with the media, Steve Kerr. They've got Steph Curry as a teammate. It's a world-class organization, and they win the title every year. They're barely even, they run unopposed. They're like a politician, and the uh, Democrat drops out. <laughs> I mean, they run unopposed. So if you want to be a superstar, Part of being a superstar is being able to handle, oh my God, a question at a press conference. LeBron has had people, helicopters. Michael Jordan couldn't get married, helicopters. I mean, he had to literally, they have to literally buy security and buy islands because people are hovering and chasing and stalking it. And Ethan Strauss is wearing you out? You're not LeBron. Example number 28, why you're not LeBron. All right, let me shift to this. Trading deadline. It is interesting that a New York Nick, Kristaps Porzingis, got traded to Dallas. I didn't hear a word of it before it happened. Involved a star and involved a big city. Of course, this thing has been a nine-day, three-ring circus. Let me just ask you a question. I don't think Anthony Davis who I support wanting to leave, is going to end up a Laker by noon today. And what is going to happen if he doesn't? There's some losers in this. There's some carnage in this. There's some shrapnel in this. First of all, the biggest loser is going to be Luke Walton. I mean, every teammate knows now they are just a pawn in the bigger picture. I think you're going to have a very messy second half. I think you're going to be a borderline playoff team. That's distracted. Uh, LeVar Ball will be on our show next hour. He's got issues with his son ever having to play in New Orleans. I think Luke Walton is in big, big trouble here. This is going to be a very messy second half, and the Lakers are going to be a borderline playoff team. Secondly, I don't think the Lakers look good here. 
I think it's a bad look for the Lakers. At one point, it was reported they were giving up seven players and six draft picks. Are you kidding me? What are you, the Buffalo Bills, the Cleveland Browns? You look desperate. There's a story out. Brian Windhorst said the Pelicans never intended to move Anthony Davis to the Lakers. They instead wanted to leak things to sabotage the young Lakers as revenge for what New Orleans saw as tampering.